multi-trait inheritance, and we're going to be looking at Mendel's laws, two-trait Punnett squares, uh, which will also include dihybrid crosses, and then just a quick uh, discussion about probabilities. Mendel's law of independent assortment. So here's where we're looking at two characteristics, and we're saying that these pairs are not going to have an effect on each other. So they're going to be separated and they are going to show their, their dominance or recessiveness independently of each other. So if we're talking about something like seed texture versus seed color, those are two different characteristics and they would show that dominance without affecting the other characteristic. This is only going to be true for alleles that are not on the same chromosome. If they are on the same chromosome, then that chromosome is going to end up with those both alleles ending up in the same gamete, uh, assuming we're not doing any crossing over that would affect it. Um, so we are looking at only when they are not found on the same chromosome. So whatever gene we're talking about, whatever allele, whatever uh, trait of a particular characteristic, um, that is going to be on one chromosome, and the other, the second characteristic, is going to be on a separate chromosome. Therefore, they would not affect each other. Just as a refresher, we have Mendel's independent assortment law we just talked about. Previously, we had talked about the law of segregation. And again, if we're thinking about during anaphase, we've got the homologous pairs of chromosomes. And assuming there's no non-disjunction events, then those homologous chromosomes are going to be separated separately from each other. One ends up in one side, one on the other side, and then further divides the sister chromatids during anaphase 2. But during anaphase 1, they should be segregated from each other. So whatever allele that individual has from, let's say, the, the mother, and they have another copy from the father, those two alleles are going to be segregated during anaphase 1. Now, independent assortment says, okay, that's fine, but also if you're talking about more than one characteristic, those characteristics, again, assuming that they are not on the same chromosome, then they should also be unaffected by each other. So when we go to look at this, we have um, two characteristics that we're looking at, of which we would have two possible traits for each characteristic. So we're looking at purebreds first, Say we're looking at um, peas and we have a characteristic for the texture where the trait could either be round or wrinkled. And then we have a separate characteristic. So this is why we're looking at two characteristic crosses here. Um, we have another one for the actual color of it where it could either be yellow or green. And of course we have uh, complete dominance, dominance here. Um, we're looking at capital letters for the dominant trait and lowercase for the recessive version of that trait. And then same thing, the dominant for the other characteristic, the trait for yellow is dominant, so we're choosing Ys for that. And the recessive one will be a lowercase y. So if we had two purebreds or two breeding plants um, for each of these characteristics, and we'll put the dominant variety within the same individual. So this one is homozygous for the dominant trait of round and homozygous for the dominant trait of yellow. And it's going to be crossing with another one that, let's choose another color here, is homozygous for the recess, re, re, recessive trait of wrinkled and homozygous for the recessive trait of green. So when we go to cross these two individuals, unlike a monohybrid cross, we've got a, a um, two characteristics here that we want to be looking at. And so if we want to look at the possible gamete, so for this individual here, for the particular trait of the actual um, texture of the seed, there are two possible gametes. So it can have a capital R, or again, because it's homozygous, another capital R. So you can imagine that it could donate that one capital R, and with it, independently assorted, would be the other characteristic, in this case, a capital Y. And so that's one possibility for the gametes that this individual could produce. And then this capital R here could also donate that capital R, but this time with the other version of its second characteristic in this, the, the color in this case. Plus, it could use the other R, which could, could be combined with the first capital Y, or that other R could be combined with the second capital Y. You can see why we use a table to sort these. So just from this one individual, we have these four possible combinations of gametes that could be produced. 
and then we can go through the exact same process with the other one. With the purebreds, it's fairly easy. We've got we've got uh, two, four versions that are all the same in this case. But if you imagine, let's try to draw this one a little bit fancier here. Um, for the gametes that could be produced from the other, this case the recessive homozygous recessive individual, uh, we could take the little lowercase r and the y. So again, the first r with the first y, or the first r could be with the second y. And then the second r could be with the first y, and the second r could be with the second y as well. So we'd end up with these four gametes being the possible combinations of chromosomes that we could get from that second homozygous individual here. Then we do the same thing we did when we did look at the monohybrid crosses. We can put them together. Let me clear out the chicken scratch here and put up the typing. Um, so then when you go to cross this particular gamete, which is one of the possible four, and remember, it's not actually four gametes being produced. We're just looking at probabilities here. So of the four possibilities of gametes being produced from the original individual, um, we could take one of those and it could be combined with this gamete. And so we cross these two together, um, we get a particular outcome. And we do the same thing with this one and this one and this guy and this guy. And so for every single possibility, in this case, since each individual has four possibilities, we have four across the top and we have four down the side from the other individual. Um, so again, we have a four by four grid with 16 possible combinations. Now, some of those combinations are be overlapping in this case all of them because the choices are going to be as they are but depending on whom the parents are and which gametes they can produce we can end up with various possible outcomes with this one here looking at the combinations we end up with 16 of the exact same outcome so we could say that this produces all dihybrid offspring and so these are hybridized um, offspring they have one gamete from each one um, each parent that is different than from the other parents, so we call them hybrids. And in this case here, they are heterozygous for both of the possible characteristics. Um, and we have um, all of them being like that. The phenotypes for these ones we could describe as, okay, well, they've got this dominant R gene and then one recessive R, but the dominant one is dominant over the recessive. And they have the dominant yellow gene in this case. So we'd say that one, the phenotypes of them even though they have this heterozygous genotype, the phenotypes are going to be 100% round yellow peas. If we were then take that F1 generation that we created in the previous cross, we could say, okay, let's take one of these um, hybrid that is dihybrid. It's, it's, it's got a heterozygous in both sense. If we crossed it with another heterozygous for both characteristics, um, again, the possible gametes you can imagine. We could do it again here. We could say, okay, this capital R could be with the o uppercase R, or that first capital R could be with the lowercase y. And then the lowercase R could match up and, and be sorted with the, that's not a y, capital Y, and, or the lowercase R could be sorted with the lowercase y. So in this case, we get four different combinations of gametes from that one individual. And of course, the other would produce the same. So each dihybrid parent can produce, in this case, four different gametes. And we have the four possible combinations. So we can throw those into a chart and see what the outcome is going to be. Same idea, but a little more interest this time. Um, when we look at doing the cross, we end up with a bigger variety of individuals. And then this gives us the ratio that we would have with a dihybrid cross. So for phenotyp phenotypically, um, all of these ones here would be round yellow because they have the dominant R. So each one has at least one dominant R, whether it is homozygous or heterozygous, because yellow is dominant, the P will be yellow. And in this case, we're looking at all of the round ones as well. Oh, circling the wrong one here. There's the yellow. There's yellow. So they could be, let's do that again, homozygous for yellow or heterozygous for yellow, and the peas would still be yellow. Um, now, in terms of texture, these are also all round yellow ones because each one has at least one dominant R. Um, even though some of them have two dominant Rs, these are all the round yellows. And if you count them up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have nine that are both round and yellow, the two dominant character traits of the characteristics. Here we have three that are um, 
round because they have at least one, sometimes two, but at least one dominant gene that is going to make sure that they are round. Um, but these ones, because they have the two versions of the recessive color for yellow, um, they have both versions, so the green color actually comes through. They, they are homozygous for green, and there are three of those. And if we look at the sort of opposite of that, these ones here are yellow because they have at least one dominant yellow, but they have, there's three of them that have the two versions of the recessive green, sorry, wrinkled. And therefore there are three that are yellow but wrinkled. And then the least likely would be where you have the recessive ones combining with only other recessive um, alleles. And therefore you get one that is both recessive for its texture as well as for its color. So it would be green and wrinkled. And so our ratio that we see with these dihybrid crosses is going to be a nine to three to three to one. So these crossing dihybrids, um, the resulting phenotypes, as we mentioned there, um, we have the four possible phenotypes and the ratio between them is nine to three to three to one with the dominant traits showing up um, nine out of the 16 times and the recessive trait actually showing through the phenotype only one out of 16 times and then the two one or other of the versions either recessive for the color or recessive for the shape is going to show up three out of 16 times so there's our genotypic ratios and for all dihybrid crosses we're going to get this same ratio because we're going to have the same combination of uh, recessive and dominant genes and so we always end up with nine to three to three to one assuming we are doing a dihybrid cross now a quick thing about probabilities when two pea plants are bred it's not that you get four offspring or 16 offspring um, where we are talking about probabilities these planet squares do not tell us what is going to be produced they merely give us the probabilities of what is going to be produced so the product law can be handy here in terms of calculating the chances of probabilities um, when you look at two or more outcomes. And so when you look at the chance of one thing happening, that's got a certain chance to it. But then if you talk about two things occurring back to back, we can use this product law to help us figure out the chances of both of those instances occurring by factoring in both of their likelihoods. Essentially, you take the likelihood of one, you multiply by the likelihood of the other, and that would give you the probability of the outcome of both of those things happening at once. Let's look at how this would work for something like a coin toss. So if you have a coin, we're going to assume 50-50 heads or tails. So probability of it landing on heads, just one coin flip, would be a 50% chance. And with probabilities, we, we can either talk in percentages or often we'll put it out of one. So a 50% chance would be a 0.5 as a probability. Then if you said, okay, well, what would be the chances of landing on heads twice? And this is looking specifically the, the overall outcome of doing it two times and both of those times being heads. So if you had 50% for one, um, it, the chances of both of them landing on heads, each one is 50%. And so what we do is we'd find the product of those two possibilities, 0.5 times 0.5. And of course, this is less likely landing on heads twice than landing on heads once. And so the chance of landing heads once is 50%. And the chance of doing it twice specifically in a row is 0.25. Each time you do it, the chance is 50%. But doing it once and then again, you have to multiply the probability of each roll. And in this case, 0.5.5 is 0.25. So you can imagine how this would turn out the more times you do it in a row, the less likely it would be for a particular outcome for all combined to happen. For example, trying to get heads three times in a row, again, each time you do it, you have a 50% chance. So each time you roll, or flip in this case, um, you have a 50% chance, but the outcome of trying to get all three in a series would be the product of multiplying 0 0.5 by 0 0.5 by 0 0.5. And so again, we're going down by half each time. You don't have 12.5% chance of getting heads three times. So of course, landing on heads four times would be half of 12, which is half of 25, which is half of five. Um, if we applied this, so something genetics, and again, if we looked at something that we had a 50-50 chance of, so we're talking about things like these characteristics. Um, so if we looked at human sex chromosomes, the chance of having a X, X pairing versus a XY, 
Um, so assuming those are 50%, and we know through non-disjunction events, not exactly 50%. Um, so let's just assume that it is 50% one or the other. And so if you're saying, okay, well, what are the probabilities of having a baby that is a female girl with XX chromosomes? Of course, again, rounding over, we're going to say that's a 50% probability. However, the chance of having two girls, again, each rule would have a chance of a 50% a chance of creating a girl 50% of the time, but two in a row would be 50% times 50%, so it would be a 25% chance. Lastly, um, this is looking at um, characteristics that do not interact. So this is the easy stuff that we've been doing with these monohypercrosses, dihypercrosses, um, where we're saying, okay, these are discontinuous variation. The, the, they, they follow this, this, uh, the laws of Mendel um, with independent assortment, um, and they do not interact with each other. They're found in different chromosomes. They're very simple traits that are determined by something like one gene. And so there are some human characteristics that are like this, things like dimples, how your earlobes are attached, whether they're free hanging or not. Um, there, there's relatively few of these simple discontinuous variations that are actually human characteristics. Most human characteristics are going to be continued variation, where it's not just determined by one single gene with two possible outcomes that show full or um, full dominance or full recessiveness. Um, that's not normally the case. Most of it is through continuous variation, where it's a lot harder to determine the outcome because the the alleles are a not going to be only found in one place, and b maybe they are found on the same genes, two different ones, so then they'd be interacting with each other or following each other. Plus, they may be additive. So so again, most human characteristics are not as simple as the characteristics we saw with Mendel's um, pea plants. Uh, most of them are going to be a lot more complicated than that.